the food was all right. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of what I expected. <laughs> it was good. I expected it to be. Um, it was awesome. It was fun, though. So, yeah. Good. It was very much what I expected it to be. <laughs> it was good. Yeah. yeah. I was in Atlanta. So, I was in Atlanta, and I got a chat plate, too, before I, before we left. I didn't get home till Thanksgiving. <laughs> So I got home and and um my girl my girl parents they was already done cooking so I had took a shower and I was like shoot uh you know let me try some of that got a couple plates hit the road ate ate when I got got to my auntie house I'm watching this uh this Eagles Bills game right now. The Bills winning, I think, five, three points. It's 31 28, 36 seconds back. Philly got the ball. It's crazy. Bills That's got it good. You said what? That's coming down to the wire. Yeah, the Bills got to win this. Ooh. The Eagles got a good team. I mean, Still think the Chiefs are better. The way the game ended, just felt like the Chiefs were still better, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, they're scary. Both teams are scary. Eagles always seem like, even this game, even in this game, the Eagles always seem like they could play better than they do. And that's like every game this year. And that's the scary part about them, is they be winning games, but it's it's almost like, Every team that plays them gives it to them. That's just what it seems like all the time. Like, and the Chiefs was that was last week's. That's how it looked last week. Like the Chiefs just dropped the game literally. That's that's how it be sometimes in the championship games. Right. No matter whoever whoever has the edge, so they win. Um, College football was good last night too. No, all good. Man, I'm over. I'm I'm driving and I'm listening and I'm like, man, it's if Auburn beat if Auburn beats Bama, uh, what's the name? We said it. I said it a couple weeks ago, and for a minute it looked like it. Uh, Florida, Florida was giving Florida State a tough time yesterday. I'm I'm, I'm Louisville. I'm hoping Louisville could beat Florida State. They still play. They should play in the uh, ACC championship. But yeah, I think that that game made me feel like they're going to give Alabama more of a chance. Um, they're going. If you can compare that to the, I guess the Georgia and the Georgia game, basically Georgia and Auburn, the, the similar type games. You know. Yeah. They, it plays good with both of those teams. What's the name though? They just keep in they keep in Oregon right up there. Like they they keep in it's almost like the committee the committee likes Oregon more than they like Washington. For sure. Which one would you say has better ratings? A Washington game or an Oregon game? Like more well, yeah, Oregon yeah, Washington. yeah, yeah. So yeah, like, from that stand from that standpoint, yeah. But and I also think Oregon is a better team than Washington, but it's like it's so funny to treat a team better when one team is undefeated and the team you're treating better lost to the undefeated team. It's 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 very interesting to me. It's very interesting to me. And Alabama's strength and schedule is is better. Texas is better. For sure. So hey. it's so it's so it's it's real interesting um how they're gonna uh how this is gonna play out. They gotta be Georgia though. Yeah. Alabama has to be Georgia and Oregon has to be Washington. And then the committee got to rank Alabama over Texas. And that's if they rank they gonna do whatever they want, truly, but um it's just it's just weird it's just weird how uh 
it's weird how the committee is is looking at things. Like in in the way you rank all these teams is important also, um, because. Do you put Alabama, I mean, or Ohio State, even like they're a one loss team as well? It's like we're just kicking like out that, that like like you have to look at strength. It doesn't even make sense. Like the only thing you can go off of is strength of schedule. There's the only thing you can because you're playing. That's the difference between the NFL and college is because you're playing. There's so many college teams. So you're playing, everybody's playing different teams, right? In the NFL, for the most part, if you're on the same conference, you play around in the same teams. So, and, and you're playing in divisions. It's it's 32 teams. It's not how many teams it is in the college, right? It's too many. So to say, to say that, to say that, out of, Ohio State has a very good, strong strength of schedule, and that's the thing. It's also not consistent. They're not very consistent with how they rank different people. Oh, hold on, bro. Almost like the timing, even. Yeah. yeah. Give me a quick second. All right. Yeah, when they don't, they don't, if they take in consideration strength of schedule, Ohio State's, I got, I got, I, I seen it. Like if your own law is a team that you're putting at the top, in the top two, like you're. That, and, and, and that makes sense, right? That makes sense. So then why does why does Oregon get ranked over Texas? Because why why would Oregon be I mean, ranked over Texas? Why would Oregon be ranked over Texas if Alabama was to beat Georgia? Their their losses to somebody. One, the Oklahoma thing is is Philly just tied it up. The Oklahoma thing is funny because we lost Oklahoma. It's a rival. Uh and you've seen how close Auburn was against Alabama it be, just because it's a rival. Um, but th this is the toughest strength of schedule in order for the um, top 10 teams. Ohio State has number one. Texas is number two. Penn State's number three. Missouri four. Alabama's five. So Ohio State, Texas, and Alabama have the top five toughest schedules that are in the um, top 10. Oregon's last. They're in a they're out of the top ten. They have the least. They have the easiest schedule. You get what I'm saying? So how how are you? If if Texas and Alabama has a stronger strength of schedule than you, that means we played more competition, and we both all three of us have a one loss team, and and all three of us win. It doesn't mm -hmm. make if like how do you 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 can't. You they can't care say about who the team lost to. They care about where you lost. But came. that, but but that doesn't make any sense though, because it it, it don't make sense because, because teams who lost other top against other top five teams. If that's but you, lost. but look, that, but my 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 point is strength of schedule. You, the only reason why Oregon look look does this not make sense? It's Cody. It's a different point. No, it's not. It's that one, look, look, look. Like one let me finish. Ready. Let me finish my point. Let me finish my point. If strength of schedule means what? The teams that you're playing aren't as good, right? You're saying the yes. only the only team Oregon lost to was the team that was ranked top five, right? Who so who was Oregon's loss? To Washington, right? Washington. Remember right. that. Everybody else that they played, they beat. That's what you're telling me. Yes. Right? So mm -hmm. everybody else that they played aren't as good as everybody else that Texas and Alabama played, which is why they have a loss. 
you're missing the whole point. How's how is that missing a point? How is that missing a point? The only reason why Oregon hasn't lost more games is because they didn't play better competition. If Oregon played, if Oregon played Texas, if, does, does or what's the, the point? point. You go what's like the point? Go? I'm gonna go. Yeah. But what I'm saying is this: when you when you're ranking these teams, you're ranking the teams that they lost to. So you can go down the line. Alabama lost to Texas, so that that puts them at in a tier. Uh, Texas lost to Oklahoma, so that puts them in a tier. Michigan lost. I mean, uh, Ohio State lost lost to Michigan, that puts them in a tier. And to me, that that tier against against solidified top undefeated teams or teams with just one loss. If that's your loss, it, it's going to hold more. It's going to hold better value than if you lost to a team that's not ranked at all. I feel like that's going, that's that that's a heavy part of how they come up with it and like matchups. So to me, Texas has a bad loss. I'll count that as a bad loss for them. I would even count that as being worse than Alabama losing to Texas, which is crazy. My, that I'm not missing your point. Your your point. This is what I don't understand when people say that that y'all don't understand. You're saying Oregon, Texas has a worse loss than Oregon does. I'm saying the reason why Texas has a worse loss, Alabama has a worse loss, is because they played more competition. Oregon, if Oregon has Texas's schedule, would they be only losing to Washington or would they lose not. to Alabama too? Of would they not. we we just played Texas Tech? Oregon played Texas Tech, right? They beat Texas Tech by three points early in the season. They beat Texas Tech by three points early in the season. We hey. beat Texas Tech by 30. It's not me missing the point. It's almost like you no. y'all missed the point. The, you're, you're, how, how does that not because you're going to the second level of this of the games, you're not even basing it on the, the actual game. You're basing it on a t another team that y'all beat that beat another team. I'm just saying heads up. But that's – You negative. can't – my point is you can't say, well, Oregon's worst loss is to a top four team when every other – you can't – that's what that's what doesn't make sense to they're me. Putting, you listen, can't and, – and a lot of people, their worst putting, loss losses, is based off of losses. the comp – they're they're comparing their losses. They're not even comparing their competition because right. Everything... But you have to if you can. How can you compare the losses without comparing the competition, Cody? If you play, if, if, one, if, if, if if I play, Co Cody. If I play, Cody. 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 Look. 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 If 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 we're in a one, say 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 we're say we're in two different. Say we're in two different. Uh. Say 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 hypothetically, there's a one on one basketball competitions, right? There's two different competitions. Why you can't even listen to that? You are I'm shaking listening. your head. I'm listening, you, but it's you, not the same. You playing. So then, what's the point of even having a conversation? Because what I'm <laughs> what I'm saying is what I'm saying makes sense. If if you play, if you saying. play, if you're you saying. play the top, if you play top ten against the top ten. Uh, players in the league one on one, and I play against. If you play more, if you play oh, better competition than I do, and I only play at a high. This is the thing: they didn't even beat Washington. The team is playing better competition than the other, and the other team isn't. And then you're judging each team by who they lost to, when. Exactly. That's yeah. judging it by the competition. You're, that's, you're that, that they you're, lost. You're adding the eye test in there that is important. No, no, I'm not adding the eye test. I'm I'm looking at strength of schedule. Eye test tells me Texas is better than Oregon. If we just going off eye test, if we're going off eye test, we got a better defensive line. We got Oregon a better control. offensive line. Listen. We run the ball better. Our yeah, quarterbacks are control. arguably close. We got a better coach. We got better weapons. If we listen, play Oregon, listen, we beat listen. Oregon. If Oregon plays Bama, Bama beats Oregon. Oregon lost to Washington. We talking about a team that has a loss on their belt, and everybody else in the top ten 
has played better competition. But you're you're I feel like you're vouching against a team that's not going to make it to the top four. Oregon is not going a top four team in any case scenario. I'm vouching. I'm vouching no, no, no. against I'm vouching to, against I'm vouching against, against a Oregon si who's not in my opinion, Oregon is not going to make that top four. There's no way you're putting them in the top four. It's, it's it's still I'm vouching against a system, period. Because I think I I think I maybe I was talking to Chase about it, but I think I said it last time we talked. Maybe not. What's going to happen is the the player. It's the com- the committee is flawed, and it's always been flawed. Do you understand them putting Alabama ahead of Texas, though? Yes or no? Do you understand that? For for everything, not not just what's the best team, but just for everything that goes on with the football. Do you understand why they will be over Texas? It makes more sense, but I don't I don't agree with it. Just because Texas won, because does that? I feel like Alabama has a better schedule than Texas. So, but you you can believe that all you want. Schedule. If you look at strength of schedule, literally Texas has a better strength of schedule than all of them. They're playing. It's not. It's playing. not a belief thing. It's not a they're belief playing. thing. This is actual. This is the strength of schedule. Texas has a better strength of schedule. They ranked them them. Higher. It's not a ranking. Texas is Ohio State has the strongest strength of schedule in the top ten. Then Texas, Bama's number five. See, no way Ohio State has the strength of schedule. No, they don't. They have play to Penn. Them. They play Penn State. They play no. Notre Dame, and they play Michigan. Nope. They just play one good team, in my opinion. They play. Look, okay. look, but look, that's what that's, and that's what I'm saying. You're we, talking about your opinion. You're talking about your opinion. I agree and I'm with telling you. you I know how they it's make like the saying, league. it's like, no, I'm. it's not my list. It's the list. It's like saying, oh, yeah, I. Not yeah. my list. I'm saying, I know how they make their list. Obviously, you're trying to come up with who's actually the better team, but they're coming up. With, right, right, with, right, right. And that's what, that's what I'm saying. I disagree with the committee. It's a committee's issue. That yeah. they rank if you rank if you if you don't rank, it's gonna continue to be a problem. And and I also think I'm listening to the podcast because I like Texas and I don't know, I don't you might be a Tennessee fan, but I know y'all probably, you know what I'm saying? Uh I'm Tennessee fan. I you know, I'd be this passionate regardless if it was Texas. Next year it's gonna be somebody ranked 13, 14, 15, that's gonna be better. Then 11, 12, 13. But because the committee, they it it doesn't make any sense. If I have a better, if I played better strength, if I play better competition in both this team has one loss and this team has one loss, but I play better strength of schedule, you should reward because otherwise, what's the point of what's the point of Texas playing Alabama then? What's the point? To, to get them to become a part of the SEC and basically putting their getting a taste of SEC. My, 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 that's a, besides that. What's the point of putting a non-conference team that's very successful? Because this is what this is what happened. Washington or Oregon gonna play Georgia, and what's gonna happen, Cody? It's gonna I'm be sick of see, I'm, I'm it's sick. Gonna of, be that's my point. I'm sick of this. I'm sick of that. And you want to know why it's going to be embarrassing? Because they're not battle tested. You want to know why they're not battle tested? Because the committee rewards them without being battle tested. So, so I'd rather see, I'd rather it's see Alabama, team. I'd rather see Alabama be ranked number four, even though we beat them. I'd rather them be number four than Ohio, Oregon or Washington. If Washington's undefeated, give it to them. But if one of those teams, if everybody's one loss, I'd rather see Alabama play Georgia in the first round because I know it's going to be a game. I want to see. I don't want to see Oregon and Washington get there and Georgia beat their ass by thirty. And it's like Texas or Alabama could have gave them a fight. You get what I'm saying? And that's works. what's going. That's not how the game works. Like. It's, it's not it, how it should work. Sometimes one side of the board is going to be heavier than the other side. Like I, that's, I think they're doing this, like adding all those, all these teams to the SEC to make the SEC weaker. It's going to dilute the SEC. So like now, people put more respect on like Ohio State, and Michigan. I'm just like Ohio State, and Michigan. I would say that they actually might give a fight just because of their air, how they how they pass. 
They they're, they're a good team. They can't they're, stop the they're... run. They can't stop Alabama's. I mean, Alabama or Georgia running at all. I don't know. Uh, yeah, Ohio, Ohio State definitely. Mich- Mich- Michigan is the only team I feel like that could beat Michigan. Probably it is Georgia. I feel like we got a Texas has a real good defense and Alabama has a real good defense. That's why I'm saying, like for real, like top five. I really like Oregon's not beating Michigan, bro. They're not. Go- yeah, but they- why- Washington's not beating Michigan. Florida State's not beating Michigan. Florida State, they lost value, in my opinion, with, with their game. And Jordan Travis is hurt. Like, these teams aren't going to beat the top two teams. Alabama and Texas have a shot at beating those top two teams, and they're not going to be ranked because of their strength of the schedule. Alabama literally, like, when you when we're talking about this, think about it. If, 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 if Alabama and Texas don't play, both teams are undefeated right now. You can say, you can say, and you play the sport, you know how playing high competition takes you away week to week, right? If if mm-hmm. our biggest if our biggest game, if our biggest game was Oklahoma this year, instead of Alabama, it's a totally different outcome, I think. You guys losing to Oklahoma is like Alabama losing to Auburn. Right. If they would have lost to Auburn. Right. And it would have been like you, everybody, everybody would say what? Alabama's better than Auburn. They lost to they, they to their rival. Auburn missing like one. They're making they're missing a playmaker because they're hanging in they're hanging in with these teams. With a lot of good teams. And the Big Twelve, the Big Twelve is also overlooked and it doesn't make sense either and it's just off how the committee ranks everybody like Tennessee was still ranked bro why it's crazy T- Tennessee still ranked and I don't think Utah is ranked Utah beat USC Utah beat Florida that's strength schedule but it's it's all cons- perception of schedule strength you see what I'm saying how are you going to say uh Schedule strength when basically the SEC is top heavy. Well, no, yes and no. I'm just saying ACC. It's, like it's just funny. This this what I mean by it's inconsistent. Tennessee, I don't know what they're gonna be ranked now, but they were ranked like top twenty or twenty one or something like that. And Utah's not ranked. Tennessee lost to who? Uh, I'm trying to think. Alabama by like ten. They lost to Florida. Utah beat. Florida, Utah beat USC, Utah hung in there with Oregon. Um, but somehow Utah is ranked over Tennessee. It like it's inconsistencies with with how they they uh reward people, you know what I'm saying? Like so so when you say even when we talk strength of schedule, it's almost it's based off what teams are ranked. And if you're ranking them based off these inconsistent things instead of saying no this team is actually better the big 12 is actually good oklahoma is better than their two loss record it's just they played kansas state and such and such in the big 12 and the big 12 is stronger than everybody sees but they're ranking them inconsistently so it makes the texas loss to oklahoma seem worse than what it really is (laughs) so so and that's just the truth, bro. It's just the truth. It's just the truth, bro. Kansas State is a very good team. BYU is a very good team. Texas has a 0% chance of making that top four. They, it, my, it, it, not that based on them actually being a good team or a bad team. It's just knowing how that committee works. It's like they've written them off from that top. They basically have written them off from that top four conversation. It's just like they keep saying, "Oh, Alabama's creeping back." Like that's right. That's, that's the narrative of even when they're talking about these. And, and I'm saying it's and I'm saying it's inconsistent because they 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 are picking and choosing what matters <laughs> and what doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Otherwise, we don't play Alabama until we get in the SEC. Because what's the point? We would have been undefeated, so, or but- we would have, or we would have been a one loss team. Guess going back to what we originally said, more of these uh, 
I guess, is it a Sweet 14, a Sweet 18? How many teams are going to be playing in the new playoff? Like how many? 12. More 12. That's like too much, but it gives – I like this. Well, if, you, if you don't I like – no, I, I, don't don't like, I don't like four because of a year like this. A year like it because – you think you will mark out the teams that really ain't good? Right. So like it's gonna be, it's gonna be every year, it's gonna be the top, the top four, you know, like you said, and everything is getting bigger. So SEC is gonna be real competitive. Big Ten even is gonna be real competitive because they're expanding. And that's the thing. I think Oregon somebody else is going to the Big Ten, which will help. It will help Michigan and Ohio State and Oregon, because in a year like and I and they should be they're getting rid of like the Pac-12 right now. The reason why Washington and Oregon will be playing each other is because there's not you know how the SEC got an East and a West. There's not there's nothing like that in Pac-12. It's just the top two teams in a conference. It doesn't matter if it's East or West. I think that's how the Big Ten is gonna work which means a lot of them are going to play each other and um and if you lose earlier in the year against one of say Michigan Michigan and Ohio State will play every year still but say say uh like this year Michigan and Ohio State are the top two teams in the Big 10 because Ohio State just lost to Michigan, they're not playing in the Big Ten Conference because they're on the same side. They're on the same side. They're, both, they're in the Big Ten East. Mm -hmm. Iowa is not – everybody knows whoever won yesterday was going to win the Big Ten Championship. Iowa is not going to beat Michigan. You get what I'm saying? So, it, you know, like it's it be flawed situations throughout all of college football. And, and I think uh, the Big Ten – Man, I hope they do. You just but, have to reward the undefeated, basically. Yeah, you could reward the un. That's why the twelve team is important because fine, Florida State, your quarterbacks hurt. You beat LSU. You beat Florida. If you beat Louisville, fine, go ahead. Washington, you barely beat Oregon. Oregon seems like a better team. Fine. Uh, te like I'd be fine. Look, Texas, we rank seven because what happened. What would happen this year is, uh, I forget who's 12. Oregon would play somebody in the SEC. Like in the first be, round. They, be, they play Louisville or somebody. They would play somebody battle-tested. If I compare Oregon to a team in the SEC, like their level, I would say that would be – So the tiers would be Georgia, Alabama, and then maybe the third tier would be like maybe a LSU. Missouri, LSU. Missouri, LSU, Ole Miss. I'm putting them maybe Missouri, LSU. That's how it was have to stand up in the SEC, in my opinion. And Texas being around that same like ballpark. Yeah, it's a, it's just so weird. That's why the playoffs are important. That's why I like twelve because it gives that, even if because it's like, even if even if uh, it makes it more interesting. Twelve because even if uh Alabama say they weren't to make the top four, we would we would at least see okay, but the Alabama's better than Oregon. We would at least see proof of that in the twelve team playoff. You know what I'm saying? Because you're gonna see, you're gonna see, uh, because they'll probably give at least either the first two teams a buy, the top yeah. two teams a buy, and maybe uh, one of the matchups that I have would be like Washington, like a high ranked team is gonna play against a, a eleven or a ten. They going that's how they're gonna be matching them up like that. You know what I'm saying? One, right, right, right. The 12 or the 14. So, like, exactly these teams that are undefeated, that don't have to play nobody, they might run right. into like a Texas week one. Exactly. Or, and yeah. that way you get that. You get that. Even if 
going forward, it, the behavior continues to happen. Look, somebody going to knock them out and it don't matter. And then, but then that, then it, then it leads to, we don't have to be top one. We just need to get in. So let's not play. Let, let's, yeah, let's, you know what I'm saying? It's a total, it's a total, it'll be a total different game, but it's going to be interesting regardless. This year is still, still real good. Yeah. I don't know if you listen to my whole podcast. But I was I was talking to my boy Chase. You listened to it? I heard I heard that uh, snippet that you put out of it um, on a uh, was it Michigan it, Ohio was State was it Instagram or TikTok? One of the, I think it was TikTok. Probably both. I'll be putting in everything on both. Yeah. And I picked Ohio State winning. You did. I saw. I picked that. Ohio State winning. I don't. I asked him. I asked him if. Uh, I was like, I was like, I was like, bro, on my other podcast, um, they was getting on me because I, I said this one of the best years in college football. I was like, am I crazy? He's like, no, nah, bro, this shit, this shit good as hell. Everybody, you know, everybody in it, it's interesting. I was like, I okay. It's, it has a perception, and they figured that out too, like with the schedule and even. It has a perception that everybody's in it when everybody's not really in it. Like, it's really between like, up to any year, every year ever, it's really between four teams. Like yeah, but this year, this year is this year is a little bit different, Cole. Really even this year is a little bit might different. Be two teams. And 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 e- even if you saying in it like this, there's been great games. Like I did not expect that Alabama Auburn game to be that good. The craziest uh, game I've ever seen, probably in, in the last few years. Just like that, of- like. I'm listening to it and I'm like, yo, there's no way your Auburn about to win this. And I'm like, it's so funny listening to games and not seeing them. I'm in the highway. I'm seeing highway fourth and 31. I'm like, yo, Auburn lost. This don't even make Texas look good. Auburn beats Alabama. What the fuck? Do they make it to the SEC? I'm thinking about all these things. Fourth and 31. Ain't no way. Ain't no fucking way. They and then they say he he caught it. I had to I had to look and, and make sure that it was fourth and thirty one, and it wasn't fourth and thir- three, like a something crazy like that. Because I'm like, bro, there's no way this nigga just threw the shit in the back of the end zone. He caught it. Bro. Fourth and thirty one. That's that's a big play, and that's why I mean by like this being one of the best years of college football. Like Alabama got a shot. Alabama has a shot to make it. Texas has a shot to make it. Uh, and and last time we talked, uh, Jordan Travis, last time we talked, I was telling Tori, and Chase also agreed with me. I was like, uh, Florida could possibly beat Florida State. And that was when Jordan Travis was healthy. As soon as he gets hurt, I'm like, hell, Florida really could. Now, granted, Florida State, they solid enough to handle Florida with their backup quarterback. But even that game was like in the beginning, even Georgia Tech against Georgia in the beginning was something. Um, Washington State versus Washington was something. Every game was competitive for the first quarter, at least. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Just, just understand, like, well, you know what I'm saying? It's entertainment, man. Yeah. That's, that's all. Georgia is definitely separating themselves. I don't, I don't see uh, – they just the most. They are the most complete team. They're the most complete team. They just got weapons at every spot. Their running game is strong. Like they got a lot of runners. They got Brock. Yeah. Receivers on the outside, like they're they're straight defensively as well. I think they. What else? It's basically running away with it. I mean, Michigan, I just want to see how they handle Michigan as well. Like, how they handle that matchup. Because the Alabama is not going to be fun. Man, I just hope somebody good. I hope somebody good gets in. I just want it to be interesting. I want two, I want two good games. You do you doing to them what they do to Texas. 
you're doing to, I guess, let me pull up the rankings one more time. Give me one second. College football. You got the rankings? Okay, here it is. But you're doing to these, I guess, undefeated teams like Washington and Florida State. Mm -hmm. Like what people do to Texas, like just on a psychological level. Or Washington, they can't be good. Just because, like, I don't know. But you, you definitely have to reward the unbeaten, the undefeated. I say you have to reward them. I also look at – I'm not doing what I'm doing to Texas. I'm doing what pe – you're saying I'm doing what people are doing to Texas? If I'm trying to understand how. If they're going to put – to get at – would be Florida State. They probably have the most fraudulent. But amongst the pack of those four – well, the pack of those three, because Georgia's number one – in Michigan, they're if they if they're undefeated, I I don't mind them getting. I feel like if you're undefeated and and you win your conference, you deserve to go. I don't think that they're better than. I don't think Florida State's better than um Ohio State, Texas, Alabama. That's all, that's all I'm saying. It'd be different if it's Florida State and they really good too. That that would. That would add, that would add to it, or would it take it away? That's what's so interesting about it. It's just a, a mixed bag of chaos, truly, because we have, we have at the top, probably a very good team that probably nobody can beat, and we can't tell because of their strength of schedule. Georgia's strength of schedule isn't that good either, but uh -huh. Georgia is also Georgia. But they Michigan, play Alabama right now. This is the worst time to be playing Alabama. But right, I I just feel like Washington and Florida State they 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 ain't beat nobody. They ain't played nobody. They ain't uh, Florida State played LSU. I and it'd be different if we never seen this before. We've seen it before. You get what I'm saying? We've seen unranked teams or not unranked we've seen teams outside of the sec outside of there ain't really nobody in the big 10 recently like michigan being this good is is something that we haven't seen in a while usually it's ohio state but we've seen ohio state make it and get beat before but we've seen ohio state make it and win also so washington is one of it's a it's a one-off situation with them because they haven't been – it's like the grace I'm giving Georgia is because Georgia just won back to back. And it's the same head coach. Their defense still looks good. So I can say Georgia, even though their strength of schedule isn't that strong, is Georgia. I can't say that for Washington or Florida State. Their strength of schedule isn't that good, but it's – it's it's Washington. I don't know what that even means. They can they they barely beat Oregon, and I feel the same way about both of them. So it's like, what are we going to see if Washington plays Michigan? Is it going to be a blowout? No, I think it, it, I honestly think that it's going to be a really close game, or even Washington can uh, they can pull the upset. I mean, uh, I hope so. I hope so. But then, but then. Are we about to watch Washington? Competition Are we unless they've been there? If you haven't been to that, like Georgia has, you're gonna play to the level of your competition. Oh, we're gonna be talking about the five best tips to grow your music career. Got my boy C Lu coming in here. We're gonna come up with a top five list. Good. What I was what I was saying was uh it's very important to social media is because that's where music is consumed and discovered. So going live, being in a live setting and performing live is is important, but you're limited to access and expenses. So it's like you could only if you're doing a show in Houston, you're only the only people that are going to see it are people in Houston. Exactly. 
online you can go live and if you have connections in houston and in los angeles both cities can consume you can engage both cities in 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 one fell swoop and i i don't know too many people that go live that much like as far as like performing that's something that i'll probably uh play with you know what i'm saying Because you could go live. I think Bandcamp does it. You can go live on Bandcamp and um sell tickets to your live stream. You know what I'm saying? So imagine you got, you know, you can and you could start from an Instagram. You do you perform live on Instagram, you build up a fan base, and then maybe like once a month you say, Hey, if you want to see me on this live. come over on Bandcamp for a dollar and then on your Bandcamp you can sell your merch and I think you can get tips so like and that's Bandcamp it's free whereas if you were to do a show if you were to do a tour like it it costs money to live it costs money to travel it costs money to book the venue it costs money to pay everybody you got to sell enough tickets in order for you to make a profit you might make a profit off of just you know doing live performances online so yeah th that's just one area that a lot of people don't even think about i think when it comes to how you can build a social presence online as far as music goes and how it could work for you I mean, you can reach people in places that you never may step in, you know. Um, you have the you have the the technology to do that now. It's just like you can't go to India tomorrow, but you can make content that touches people in India or Africa sure. or it might be. Yeah, so I would just say focus on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, just like the main. And then like, When you're making the step up, you should definitely have like your own website or like a link tree to where once you meet people in real life or even in online, you, you have a place to send them to where um, they can get all all the product, all their music. They can basically follow you from from that point forward. Yeah, that, that's email list. Mean. Email list, you know, SoundCloud, YouTube. Uh, you can yeah, just and and keep. With uh, engaging content, you know, um, give them updates, give them behind the scenes, give them just inside glimpse into you as an artist. Be personal. Like, I feel like uh, people are going to attract to you if they know, like, your personality, you know, like, you, like you're doing talking sports, talking other topics outside of music. It's like, okay, I can relate to this guy. You know what I'm saying? So, for sure. Yeah. I'm going to make it. You could. Yeah, that's you for sure. Make what? One for me. you could definitely like there's people who only talk about their music on their profiles and the person who talks like a human right will get more interaction than the other person who only talks about their music you know what i'm saying so like adding adding other passions that other people share in you know what I'm saying you can you can bond with like a a music fan in the beginning is all about relationships so it's like whenever you meet somebody new you usually don't sell them something you don't ask them for something when you meet them that's not how you bond it oh yeah I bonded over such and such because he sold me a piece of fruit that I didn't really want and that's how we got so close no usually you bump into somebody And you could bump into somebody in the mall in a, sh a shoe section and both of y'all like a certain type of shoe. And then, you know what I mean? Or a sporting event or a concert event. It's usually something that somebody else has a common interest in. That's how you, that's how usually a, a relationship starts. And then it goes from that's that common interest It goes from that common interest to to them trusting you and then you and then you say or maybe you don't say maybe they just see oh he does music well i 
you know, he do got good music taste. We bond over such and such artists. I like his music reviews. Let me check his music. Oh, he he good. Now you got now you got you know created a supporter out of common interest. That somebody who just that same person that you got because of the common interest. If he sees somebody else's listen to my music, they're not listening. That's a perfect segue to the second one. It's like network and collaborate. Like um, just doing that, I feel like you're opening yourself up to finding other artists that are similar or even like creatives, people who go on a network. So like, I would just say with all that content being made, I feel like you should network with other musicians, other producers, and just anybody that's in the industry and making content, you know, you can expand your, your reach by the people you're connecting with. Like, um, open yourself to new audiences. For sure. And even even more in real life, you can go to local events, you can do like um, local performances, you can do just any events that's going on in your, in your city. Like I'm from Chattanooga. Like there's a lot of different um, opportunities where they have open mic type events to where you can perform and you might run into five other artists. You can, you know what I'm saying? Just networking, collab. If y'all do a song, your audience is, is linking up with his audience and vice versa. Like you're just growing as far as your connections of the reach of people you can get to. The collab, the collab is almost like I'm trying not to. I'm trying not to go down a rabbit hole. Trying to go into. I'm trying to stay on topic, but the collab is the collab is like a shout out for a shout out on Instagram, but it's through song, right? Or any any way you collab. Uh, if if somebody you meet somebody, he makes beats. You know he's gonna he's gonna hopefully he shares the song that you you did with him. You know what I'm saying? So that's a collaboration. He's shouting you out whenever he promotes it. You know what I mean? Um, if somebody does artwork for you, you you know what I'm saying? You tag them and maybe they repost it. You know what I'm saying? That's a that's a collab also. And of course, you know, if you do music, somebody's on a course or somebody, you know, if you get if you get two collabs on one song and it's three of y'all, three different fan bases, that will be perfect because now it's a lot of different eyes on there. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, collaboration and networking, just just like networking is so important in a lot of different ways because networking, information gets shared. You exactly. know what I mean? You, you Everybody's headed in the same direction, but people have different experiences and perspectives. So you're doing the exact same thing, but if you meet somebody that's doing uh, the same thing, they see it from a different way or they see it from a different level or maybe they progressed a little bit or maybe they know somebody that knows some. So th the networking pieces can help you learn different stuff as well. So, um, like, yeah, definitely networking, collabing and finding ways to collab in a lot of different ways is is also important and not just uh not just look at everything as a collaboration not just uh we're we're yeah, hopping on a song small. together you can collab with a, a t-shirt brand like hey exactly can you guys shout out my single but what i'll do is i'll post your i'll post myself on your merchandise you know what i'm saying my store yeah. five days mm -hmm. you know like be like, creative, go, go. be super creative with these collab ideas. Like music is just ten percent of how to get people to your music. So I mean, um, right? Collab with brands, collab with businesses. Uh -huh. For sure, don't forget to be local as well. Like um, tap in with your local market as well. Have a For great sure. understanding of that. You got any more uh, thoughts on that second one? I'll go ahead and go to the third one. Yeah, well, I'm ready. For number three. So number three is focus on high quality content. Invest in professional uh, music production. Ensuring your recordings are the highest quality. 
um, create visual appealing content, something that people want to share, like your know, music videos, lyric videos, promotional graphics, um, all types of uh, content that they can draw them to whatever there that is that you want to want them to see. Basically, and just with that, you're going to need to be consistent and make sure it's compelling, something that your uh, audience wants to engage with. I would just say is the, is the main thing when I think of that, focus on high quality content, consistency and directed content, like having a game plan as far as what you're trying to do with that, with that, with those visuals. Yeah, I think um, it's always, it, it is that battle. Um, you wrapped it up with the consistency and I think that's important. Try to find the the highest quality that you can perform consistently. So if it, you know, you don't want to drop a song a year. If you're dropping a song a year and it's costing you $10,000 to do that, you need to figure out how to drop 10 songs and spend $2,000 on each if if it's something like that. And everything lower than that and everything higher than that, you know what I'm saying? So find the highest quality version and the highest quality version that you can uh, do as, consistency, as consistently as you possibly can. You know what I mean? So... Because the consistency, the high quality, it has to be high quality consistently or it's not going to be effective. So mm -hmm. don't, don't let the quality word, uh, don't stop let the me. quality word stop you from not starting. It takes, it's going to take starting to understand what the quality is, like to right. even understand what type of quality you can produce it first starts with you starting like you can you can just start your stuff out and never actually put anything out because you're worried too much about the quality but you just got to get the ball rolling I think once you do that it's like oh I know what can be successful and what I need to be successful now like you have a gauge of what you need to bring each time yes, sir. and then number four is engage with your fan base respond to comments, messages, uh, mentions properly to build a strong, like mention in a reasonable time to build like a strong um, connection with your fans. Like ideas could be running contests, doing giveaways, exclusive promotions to like, to incentivate your audience to um, be a part of whatever, whatever experience you want to give them. Also, Consider creating a mailing list to directly communicate, like direct to consumer with your fans and keep them informed of whatever you're doing. Like you want to have um, a way to email these. If somebody gives you their email, you want to be able to keep them updated with whatever you're doing in the future. And it's just like, I feel like that's a really good tool. You know, like social media is great, but everybody checks their email, everybody you know what I'm saying? It gets their bills probably through email. I just think it's a huge market for like direct to consumer. So for sure. That's a few tips. In the email, you you own it. Instagram could change. Twitter change. All these platforms change. You know what I'm saying? You'll have to build up each platform once you get somebody's email. You know what I mean? You, as long as they don't change their email, you got them. Um, you know, they if they get rid of Instagram now, you know, if you had an email list, you have, you know, followers or your account can go dead. So email list is important. Um, and engaging. Another way to engage, just to add on to what you already said, um, another way to engage or a mindset you could think about engaging is um, just commenting, become a fan of your supporters, right? You know what I mean? So um, even if they don't do nothing like you're doing, so, you know, support them in a way that that continues, that makes them feel supported also. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Even if they just a regular account, you know, 
it's, if it's their birthday, you go on their page and you tell them happy birthday. If you want to share them on your story to, and they share your music on their story, you you know, you share them on their, on their birthday. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they post something, you get in their comments first. You know, you like them. You know what I'm saying? You 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 DM them first. You know what I'm saying? Uh, just to it just, you know, people like to feel important. Um, and if somebody's doing it to you, you know, just reciprocate the energy and take that initial step as far as going out of your way and going on their profile and engaging with whatever they got going on. I got a good question for you. This is kind of like up for debate in my mind. Like, how do you feel about the mass DM? Like, not putting everybody in one group, but like individually sending out DMs to like a large span of people. I, I've never actually really done that, but what are your thoughts on it? Do you think that people ignore those or do you think that they're actually prop like makes sense to, to do? Uh, full disclosure, completely honest. I send messages with my songs whenever I release. Usually the majority of my streams comes from those messages. My initial push, my big push comes from those messages. Now, what I what I uh what I do is usually I'll hit people up that I already have a relationship with. So I'll send you a song because I know I got a relationship with you and you're you're not gonna be annoyed with it. Now that scale is you know, we talk often, so it's a different, me messaging you is different than some other people as well, but um, Yeah, you can control what group of people you're, you know what I'm saying? They give you that, um, Instagram gives you that ability to like I don't mass message, I, be, I do it uh, individually I don't, I don't, I've never done it like that. You can do them individually like, each person receives it, it's not like one big group message, but like, right. you can send it to you can send an individual message to everybody, like all your friends at one time if you wanted to. Well, yeah. I didn't know that. When I do my messaging, I, I, I individually, I... Uh, Cater it to each I'll, individual? Yeah, and I pretty much say uh, around the same thing, around the same message, but I just cater it to who I'm talking to. Um, and sometimes, I, you know, a lot of times, it's, it's just like anything else. You know what I'm saying? Um... You know, music is music, and this is me going off into a rabbit hole, into another tab. Music is the only, like, product that people try not to think like a business. Any business that does sales, there's there's cold calling. Exactly. Any biz, any business, if you go into a sales office and you have to call people, they'll tell you to call that person every day. Even though yesterday they said that they don't need you, you call them the next day just to ask them a question, just to keep them in front of your mind. Only in music land is it frowned upon for you to message somebody that you know that likes the type of product that you create and say, hey, this is out. Check this out. Only in music land is it frowned upon. Um, yeah. And in my personal experience, like I said, whenever I drop a song, whenever I send the messages, the play count goes up. The, the attention goes up. The share count goes up. I've done tried. You know what? I'm going to just post it on a story and see what happens. I get some action, but after I get the, the action I get, I'm saying, okay, let me send this to people. And people just check it. And I um and it's almost like the email list is kind of the same thing. Um, you send in a direct message to people. But texting people, sending it in the DM, I feel like if you have a relationship and I don't need, I'll even say cold, your expectations have to be a certain level, though. If you're going to cold message people, your, your music, 
you have to understand if you send a hundred, you might get one person that checks it out. Yeah. If you're, if that's a good, I'm listening. I mean, you just want to bat a good number, like cold calling. Like if you call a hundred people and get 10 people to do it, that's, that's successful. You, right. You just and, have a lot of work. You got to message thousands of people. If you, to get right. and, and that might not be worth your time that that that's just the truth of the the messaging works it just might you might uh it might not the time that it takes to do it correctly might not be worth it and you can get better results doing something else like creating content uh basically it <laughs> in, indirectly kind of does the same thing that cold messaging would and it just it, it, it looks better and you need it to engage different people so you could take five hours and cold message people your music and and you might get the same amount of plays that you would in the time of creating uh creating a piece of content editing it uploading it um and then you know possibly get it getting shared and the same amount of people end up you end up being in front of the same amount of people and they indirectly find you but and that happened and you did you did more than one thing in the same amount of time frame so do i say all that to say messaging can get you streams it can get you plays it can get you sales um when I do my messaging, usually it's people I already know. People I know that listen to me, people I already know that like what I offer. Um, and I just want to make sure that I make it easy for them to support me. Um, you know what I'm saying? Um, and so, and like I said, I'll drop a song and I'll just put it on my story. Sometimes people don't look at your story. Exactly, stories, you know what I mean? engagement, and a lot of what's going on today is like there's a lot of people watching, but not a lot of people reacting. So, right. So sometimes that message can can move somebody to. So I say do it. You know what I'm saying? I say I say try everything. That's really what I say. Everything's not black and white. So don't think that you know messaging people your music isn't going to get your music out there it could be you could use your time doing something else but if you build a relationship with somebody and you talk to them they talk to you back over a common interest you you might be able to send them a song link and they might check it out and then they might be a fan and they might not have checked it out before you can send somebody something one month and they don't listen to it Two months later, send them something. They listen to that one. Then they listen to the one before. It's, a, it's almost like, again, I always parallel the music industry to other stuff just because my mind can my my mind connects different things naturally. Um, like a lot of times, like even with myself, when it comes to TV shows, I might not watch a TV show until it gets three seasons deep. I didn't watch Snowfall until it got three seasons deep. Snowfall, one of my favorite shows of all time. And I remember when it came out, people were talking about it. I was like, okay, if it, if it get to season three, I'm going to watch it. It got to season three, and what did I do? I binged it. You get what I'm saying? So you kind of got to look at your music the same way. You're releasing songs, you send it to somebody, and you might feel some type of way because they don't listen right away. They might listen to all three of them later. Right. You might get two albums deep and 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 then they listen and then they go through it right and they listen to it just as much as the person that listened to it step by step did every week they tuned in this person waited two years and then five minutes or five minutes an hour they listened to your whole discography just as much as somebody else did so mm -hmm. um, yeah have you seen the the show Atlanta, bro. Oh, that's one of those shows. That's one of those shows. I watched like uh, a couple episodes. I'm gonna have to binge it. It's on my list. You have to binge the whole thing. I watch it like the Chappelle show. Like I, I just put it yeah. on. It don't matter what episode it's on. Like, 
type type shit. Right. But yeah, we're gonna move off from the before. The final one is utilize online marketing strategies, which we're talking about right now. It's like develop a, a targeted digital marketing plan to reach, I guess, a broader audience. So I brought that up to say, like, even on Instagram or you can make groups. So like, these are people I, I know, know, that can be a group. You know what I'm saying? A 50 people that you can, like, dedicate a message to. Like, so you can send the same message to them 50 people. There's people I've never met these people type group that you can create. So it's just targeting and understanding which audiences you should hit. Like, for instance, if say you, you're a Spotify plays, you got people in Ohio listening to it or people in Wisconsin, I mean, Texas that love your song. Now when you go into marketing and doing like ads, running Facebook ads, you can, you know, a specific market where your fan base is and can grow it. I would just use tips like that, just getting as much information on what people like about your music and, and finding those people and giving them more of, I guess, what they like from you, giving them different tastes of, you know what I'm saying? Social media advertising is super important as far as when it comes to promoting the music. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and testing, testing stuff, looking at analytics, looking at, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, looking at the top posts from like the last week, every week I look at, that's what I look at whenever I post, I'm posting content, organic content, and I'm seeing which content performed the best. I'm looking at what I'm talking about. I'm looking at uh, uh, the, the title, the hashtag, um the colors um the, the format uh the the part of the song um the location where you shoot everything and just paying attention to okay this this type of content again it goes back to um the highest quality content that you can do consistently this type of content here is performing better than this other. So if I can, I'm gonna try to create this type of content as consistent as I possibly can. This mm -hmm. other content is not performing as much as the top one, but I can do it more consistently. So continue to do that one consistently and it's not doing bad, but this content is doing the best. So look, you know what I'm saying? You. You'll you'll start when you look at the analytics. You'll be able to you'll be able to uh, tell these things, and and then when you start talking about uh, advertising, Facebook ads, TikTok ads, Instagram ads, then you can say yes. Whenever I have a winner, I'm gonna put money here on this piece of this piece of content, um, on this platform, on this uh, what is it called uh, placement. So, yeah, and to like go with what you're saying is once you're doing this and looking at the analytics, you'll see that a lot of the times it's that old piece of content that you created that still that's oh. still generating likes like that old one that's like four posts ago like that one is the one that the algorithm likes like just try to get as many pieces of content that like over time are still doing good because those are the ones that make these accounts last, you know what I'm saying, and go farther and just have the most impact. Like if they're playing a video you made a month ago, it's still in the rotation. Man, like, yeah, be on those analytics, like YouTube analytics, they have a really good analytics system. Facebook yeah. has great, Facebook ads has really good analytics as well. TikTok even is good on it. Yeah. Spotify for artists, Apple for artists, knowing, you know, That's, what cities people are, knowing the genders, knowing the, the age ranges, all that will will feed into. Depending um, on what level what? of artists you are, like that Spotify, that Spotify for artists can get you to know how to go on tour. If you want to tour and invest in, as far as going across the country, like it gives you a good number of 
where your audience stands. Like you can go on right now, you know your top listeners are coming from whatever city it might be. Like that's right. that's really important information. Like I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like you're booming was- in Brazil. I think it's on the same Brazil. I got a uh I got a uh a, a, a placement on um a playlist that's in Brazil. Exactly. From Submit Hub. So I, I, I can't even tell you the country's name. I can't tell you the city's name, I should say. Uh that's got the most streams in Brazil. But yeah, just because of that that uh submit hub campaign in that pickup um and then that led playlist. to that that led to another uh playlist pickup somewhere else i don't even know if like maybe it's in brazil or not it could be a, like somebody that listened to that playlist if they liked it they they might add it to their own personal like list right and that's even a part of like marketing strategy like reaching out to the playlist and companies reaching out to any media and blog companies to get on these playlists because like you have to touch these people like that's what I'm saying that's the start of artist growth like that's why you want to get on 10 different playlists think about it you get you see right. how it feels booming somebody might have one that's in Russia like a Russian playlist like you know what I'm saying hip hop lovers in Russia right like, now you can have curated you know what I'm saying 500 1000 people in Europe that want to listen to your song, they want to go to the, to the show, they want to buy, buy your merch when it drops, they're going to go support you on Bandcamp or, you know what I'm saying, whenever you drop something, like, for it, sure. it's for sure the biggest, it's number five, but I'm putting it up there with, uh, just having an online presence is for sure up there. Marketing, marketing, it's all in the mindset. You you have to figure out how to strategic. A lot of people just play artists and they don't think st- strategy at all. So, and that's basically what number five is, is really thinking about it from. Uh, analytical. Yeah. Analytical standpoint of what you're doing and what's happening after what you're doing and what you can do to continue doing something or to enhance what you're doing um, instead of just going out there and posting Same and thing every time aim, you know? aimlessly yeah aimlessly posting and instead of being lucky you want to know this this happened because I did this and that way I can recreate this moment because I've seen me do it on purpose and not oh I just dropped the song and it went crazy yeah, I mean, marketing is definitely strategic. I mean, that's what I'm saying. And and also, like, just understand your strengths and weaknesses. Like, on a personal level, like, if if you're not suited to do something as far as marketing, it's it's good to find some find different avenues of doing that. Like you mentioned, Submit Hub, like they're a great um, platform for getting on playlists. Like you can submit your song to, you can control how many different uh, playlists you want to submit to. Um, they can basically, you can just do it based on however much you want to invest. So that's a really good platform um, for sure to use just to get on playlists. Mm-hmm. The one I told you about, Soundplay, that's also a good yeah. one. And yeah, I have to check it out. Soundplay, out the box, but like Soundplay, they, they might have 10 different playlists that you can submit to every, you know what I'm saying? If you have 10 songs, you can submit all 10 songs to each playlist as many times as you want. I think it's a limit per day, but you could just do do more each other day. That's like kind of how the best way to get on playlists. It's consistent too. Like playlists that were our roles on 2020, I'm, I'm on the same exact playlist and it's 2023, you know? It's just like if you yeah, I feel like if a lot of artists just like 
put their foot down and getting on the playlist. Like New Music Friday, like even the big artists, that's that's where they're getting their streams from. It's from being on like these major publication playlists. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a monopoly. How they're able to get on them, you have to be like these are ran by labels, but there's a lot of really big indie playlists where people are doing just as good, you know. Um, just have a balanced attack. Definitely focus on analytics. If you if you're just if you're going in without any direction, I mean you you don't know you don't know how, how to be successful. You have to track what's going on. I mean you can't get lucky and just have a hit, but statistically that's not likely. You know what I'm saying? Right. Mm -hmm. All these hits have something behind them. At this point, people are these hits are connected to social media, TikToks, like you know what I'm saying, a dance or something. Well, they they do and they don't, you know what I'm saying? And that's that's I think that's uh first of all, a hit is relative and you can have success outside of a hit. You can have success, you could build a fan base online without going viral. And everybody pushes for the hit, everybody pushes for virality um, when it's it's really a percentage game and you can't control it, right? It's a re, you know what I'm saying? And more people will become successful if they just try to be successful uh, a follower at a time because one follower turns into two, turns into three, turns into ten, and the way exponential growth works is the more you know, the more the more consistent you are, the more pennies you put in per day exponentially, it just grows. You know what I'm saying? So it's not and and you're building a foundation based off of um something you can't control and not I I made a hit and it was lucky and that's how I grew my fan base. Now my fan base uh they expect something that happened out of luck and how do I create something right now because they want something right now that you get what I'm saying but if you create a band, fan base based off of exactly what we talked about in the beginning the highest quality you possibly can as consistently as you possibly can you build a fan base off that then you're J. Cole right and you can be J. Cole at multi-million dollar level or you can be J. Cole at a hundred thousand dollars a year level. You, you get can what I'm saying? Your, you can replace your job and just if you're making 40 or 50k, that that's what you're making at your job. You know what I'm saying? If you can do that from your exactly. office, that's that's more than most people can do. Like so you can grow off of that. You can go from 50 to a hundred exponential growth just over time. And it's easier to do that. 